Hi, good afternoon. I'm uh, Naveen Kumar, and I'm uh, giving a talk on Google App Engine development, uh, Java data models, and other things you should know. Um, how many people here have, are familiar with Google App Engine? Just to get a show of hands. How many people here have actually developed on Google App Engine? So very few of you. So the first talk should be very informative. <laughs> OK. Hello? OK. So introduction. So Google App Engine is just a cloud platform for you to develop your web applications. And basically, Google will automatically scale your applications for you. So you can kind of deploy, and you don't have to worry about building servers, managing infrastructure, all that stuff. So the great thing about this is you're pretty much using the same architecture and tools that Google uses to scale their own applications. I mean, all you know, Google is one of the largest web companies in the world now, and you 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 got to know that they're pretty. Uh, they know everything about scaling applications. Um, it's pretty easy to develop applications with Java or Python. Um, Python is the first language on App Engine, and now we have Java. And there are free quotas that get you started, so you can pretty much deploy an application today if you want to. So Java support. Java was introduced in April of this year. And this is remarkable for several reasons. You know, One of the things now that you can do is you have Java servlets and JSPs. And this development model now is on App Engine. So a lot of people here are probably familiar with how to develop with Java servlets and JSPs. It's pretty standard. It's stuff that has been around for you know, maybe 10 years or so. And now you can put that on App Engine, and you don't have to worry about building servers, infrastructure, all that. Uh, you can use your favorite Java IDE like Eclipse, and that really speeds up development for a lot of people because you don't have to remember all these classes. Um, there's JDO and JPA database development, so I'll get I'll go briefly into that and, um, and later in the presentation. But it's very easy to actually define your own data models, and this is also another really cool point. This is not only limited to the Java language per se; it's any JVM supported language that can be used. So we're talking JRuby, Scala, JavaScript, even PHP. So even those developers can, exp can use Google App Engine now with the JVM language support. So briefly, I'll touch on Eclipse. Eclipse, uh, there's a Google Pub in that allows you to develop your App Engine applications. It'll automatically lay out your web application for you and give you one-click deployment. So all you have to do is enter your application ID that you registered with Google, and you press a button on the top in your toolbar, and you're all set. Uh, GWT is also supported, and the later talks in this uh, in this session, of course, will deal with GWT. But this really is really cool because now you have end-to-end -end Java development of powerful Java-based web applications. So uh, later on, um, my colleague will get into this, and other speakers will talk about GWT. So here you can just see briefly. Here's a screenshot uh, of Eclipse, and this is how you define it. Very very straightforward. Okay, any questions so far? Good. OK. Now, I won't get too much into this, but Bigtable is basically Google's data store. Google uses this data store for almost all of its web applications to store structured data. So you know, many of your favorite applications, like Calendar, Docs, and Gmail, even Gmail, use some form of Bigtable. And you can use this in your own applications. So now you can develop your own Google applications. Um, there are a couple of things to note. Um, Strongly consistent uses optimistic concurrency control. This is just a fancy way of saying this scales really well. <laughs> but it's not a relational database. And we'll get into this later. There are no joins and or queries. Um, there's other limitations here. So you're going to have to change how you develop uh, normally. You know, Normally, uh, we all develop with relational databases. And we're used to joins and all kinds of, all kinds of <coughs> fancy SQL and things like that. Now you're going to have to change that a little bit. So Data Nucleus is, the, uh, is an open source uh, Java persistence framework. And this is pretty much the, allows you to develop uh, Java de uh, data models on Google App Engine. Um, they have, you give you two choices, JDO or JPA. Um, if anyone's familiar with Hibernate or EJB, JPA is very familiar to you. It's almost the exact same um, structure. Um, but both of these have very similar coding styles. Uh, for this talk, we'll talk about JDO. But if you uh, if you want to use JPA, uh, extracting that version from what I'm going to the examples I'm going to give you is pretty easy. Uh, there's also a low-level API that we'll talk about later. 
So, I mean, I don't know if you can, any of you can read this, but this is uh, pretty much a, a standard Java development model. I'm pretty sure people in the back can't, can't read this, but um, if, you, if you can, um, basically you can see that there are annotations all over the place here. And these annotations basically are ways of telling the data store how to store your data. So this is my data model here. I have a primary key, which is a string. And I have some fields. One's a string field, one's a text field. And so this is, you know, anyone who's used any kind of hibernate model, this is very similar. Uh, creating, deleting, querying. Um, again, um, basically, this is pretty straightforward. There's a thing called a persistence manager, and you can use this to actually build your own queries or actually delete and create new objects. And pretty much, you create new objects by using um, basically just standard Java syntax. You create you know, new object here and then set the two fields, and then we make persistent that object. So I'm not going to get too much, but again, there are relationships here. Um, own one to many. Uh, and one to many and one to one. Uh, own relationships actually do something very interesting in the App Engine data store. Uh, they define this concept of parent child relationships. Now, why is this important? Well, parent and child entities are actually stored in the same entity group. And entity group is basically, you can think of it as a location in the data store. Um, there are certain limitations with regards to entity groups. I won't go into detail here, but you can read more about it on the uh, App Engine development website. But uh, this is also important because transactions in the data store can only be applied over the same entity group. So again, many of you are familiar with transactions in your, um, in your previous database work. And now you know, your transaction is going to be a little bit limited uh, when you're working with App Engine. And there will be more on this actually later on. Um, briefly on unknown relationships. So unknown relationships is kind of it's a very implicit relationship. It's basically I storing a field that is a key. So it's unknown in the sense that this is practically unmanaged by the data store per se. Um, it's pretty much that I store a key here. And then what I might do is I might actually take this key and fetch the related object later on in my own code later on. Uh, there are more APIs that um, you should be aware of. Um, importantly, user service. You know, many people who write their own web applications, the first thing they start writing is a login. Well, don't write that. You know what? Use Google's. You know, every, nowadays almost everyone has a Gmail account. You don't have to write a login. You don't have to store passwords. Use Google's. Google automatically handles this for you, and this is a great API for that. Um, the images service and the mail service, well, these are actually Google's own web services. You can think of the mail service as Gmail. And you can think of the images service as Picasa. And so you get operations in relation to what Google uses in those web services. Um, URL fetch. So of course, on App Engine, we can't, it's a very limited development environment. Uh, you can't create sockets and other kinds of uh, networking operations. But one thing you can do is you can at least fetch URLs using a service called URL fetch. And this is actually implemented in the standard Java library, so it's very easy to get um, uh, use these services. And memcache, this is a, basically a distributed cache for your objects, like a distributed uh, hash table, per se. And this is really useful. And I'm going to talk about this in detail a bit later. And all these APIs have some kinds of quota limitations. There are free quotas and paid quotas on App Engine. Uh, free quotas are pretty much, um, if you think about the free quota, uh, benchmark, it's about 5 million page views. So that's pretty much the benchmark that Google sets. Uh, if you want to expand more than that, you can actually sign up for an account and actually pay for more um, access. Okay, so now I'm going to get into very advanced stuff here. So are there any questions before I proceed? Okay. Before I get into that, I'm going to talk briefly about our application, Social Walk. You'll see a demo on this later. But um, we're basically, Social Walk is an enterprise social collaboration, app, uh, collaboration application, and we built it on Google App Engine. Now, one thing that we do is we use this concept of feeds.